Hey, welcome back. So in this video, I wanted to kind of go over my archiving system. I've been working a lot on this um, over the past couple of months, really trying to get everything into shape so that I'm not just swimming in a mess. Um, these are the binders that I use. I'll get into them more and I'll actually open them up here in a second. Uh, but really quick, I just did want to go over the cover and what I've done. So as you can see, I write on them. I try to make it very clear so that when they're stacked next to one another, um, I have a quick reference. It's like I'm looking at the spine of a book. There it is. Um, and then that same information is carried over onto the front. So at the very top, we have the year. We have what binder is it? Is it one of two, two of two, two of three, etc.? cetera. Um, what the rough date range is. So really just by month, this is going from June to, or excuse me, from January to June. Let me need name down at the bottom just to make sure that uh, I know what's mine. If I take it somewhere and there's a whole bunch of these or anything like that, I'm able to quickly reference. So. Let's, uh, let's open one of these up and I'll get really into the details about how I archive and how I tag my photographs. So these are my binders. These are the two I have for 2016. I'm um, sorry about shaking the camera and table there. Um, let's get into it. Uh, so that's binder two of two, as you can see there. Set that one aside um, and let's just focus on the first one to really showcase how I archive all of my work. So these binders are made by Bessler. Um, they're pricey, I'll admit. They're about $14 a piece, but they have quite a few advantages. So number one, they're very square, uh, which I like because as you can see, they stand up on their own. Um, furthermore, you can stack them really nicely. You know, you don't have to worry about the binder slanting down like that when you're working with them. Uh, they're just much easier, much easier to use. Uh, they also keep everything a little bit safer. Not that they're waterproof or anything, but I wouldn't worry as much about, you know, running to the car with this in a rainstorm. So if we open it up, there's a few things to look at here. Um, number one, you can see that one thing I don't like about these binders though, is that the three rings are centered on the spine. I prefer it when they're aligned on the back page. It just kind of makes things a little bit easier when you fold it in. However, this does allow it to fit the larger negative sheets like these, which are designed for six by seven. Um, whereas if it were mounted here, it would really only be able to fit these 35 millimeter ones. So what I've done is I take a, I'm trying to get this camera angle right here. I take just a simple, as you can see, uh, tab divider, picked them up at like Home Depot or not Home Depot, Office Depot or anywhere like that. Uh, but the reason that this is in here is so that I can take notes. So as you can see, I've put in um, for the, just quick, quickly notes saying, okay, again, this is the first binder, one of two. Um, what my primary equipment that I use in here, so this, I had a Nikon F3 for a bit, uh, my Leica M6, Pentax 67 II. Uh, but then also what's important is marking the events that are in here. Things that I did, um, bigger collections of images. So if I'm looking for a trip or maybe a photo shoot or anything like that, I'll, I'll have it jotted down here. So went to, um, went to New York in February of 2016, um, and then some notes about what happened because my M6 broke halfway through. Uh, did a lot of work with, with snow this portion of the year. Um, went up to Seattle for a while on this binder, and then as I switched to the new binder, everything that's in there will also get a note. So in 2016, went to California for a while, um, and then this one is, is not quite complete because even though I'm getting really close to having uh, my negatives actually completely sorted, uh, I don't have a firm grasp of how many rolls I shot for this binder. Um, but anyway, once we get into it, we'll see here that you have just some, you got some negatives, which is just, just some generic stuff that I shot at the beginning of the year. Everything's titled accordingly, um, as long as the as well as the date. I don't have stuff sequentially ordered just because I don't find it to matter very much. Um, but once we get past that, we get to another one of these tab dividers. And this is where I really try to focus my work and make sure that I can find the specific negatives later. Specific negatives later. So as we talked about, when we look at the front of this, the front of the collection, I've got New York listed as February. Any event that gets placed onto this front page 
gets its own tab divider. Reason being, it allows me to take specific notes about that trip um, or about that event so I can really say, okay, here's the camera that I used, here was the film that I used, here's how many rolls of film that I shot during this time period. Uh, but then also I'm able to tag specific images. So right here I have seen in. Um, as well as Seraph and Silver issue 4, Sober Mesa, which was the last issue of that publication I did. Um, and there's a red dot next to it. Reason being that if any of these images appear in more than one publication, I'm able to list that and put a separate colored dot so that when I turn the page, I can see and reference very quickly images that were used in publications. So there are two red dots. I use some photos there. You can see there's one on this sheet. Um, and I'll just go through here. You get the idea. So, some uh, some more images there, and I do this. Let's see if we can't. Yeah, there was a lot of did a lot on this trip. <laughs> oh, geez, keep going. So then we get into just more miscellaneous stuff. Um, so that's really my workflow in a nutshell. Rather than going into the specifics of date or camera or anything like that, I break things up into chunks by month and then separate them into separate binders. So the first half of the year in one binder, second half of the year in another binder. That allows me to get a quick glance at the images that I need if I know roughly the time frame. And then once I get into the binder itself, I can reference what's in here directly based on the notes that I've taken on this cover, find those images, see what the photographs were used in, and then find the photograph itself based on these little red dot markings. And this has come in really handy where if I'm referencing a specific photo, um, one that was used in a publication and I need to use it or reprint it or rescan it at a higher resolution or do any number of things with it, it helps me track down where the image is. I'm not sorting through uh, 50 sheets of these trying to, trying to find the exact photo. They're marked for me. And everything, of course, stores up so nicely in these binders. So thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Hope this helps you maybe work on your own system. If you have any comments or want to know more questions about what I do with my binders and how I work with my negatives, please leave a comment below. I'd love to see what some of your uh, negative archiving systems are because it's something that I've struggled with for years in order to even come to this point, which I'll recognize is not perfect. Uh, but thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel, follow me on social media. I've included a whole bunch of links below. Um, and until next time.